Okay, welcome everyone to our diversity and inclusion work group meeting on December 3rd. The year is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have another agenda item. So we do have the meeting minutes in our Google Docs. So if you are not there, I can find them real quick. Copy link here. Okay. In the Google Doc, please do help maintaining the meeting minutes. The thing I think we can start with is the pull requests that are basically done. So making the formatting change, I think we can just merge that. Any objections? This is pull request 130. Here real quick. I should post it in the meeting minutes. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks good. It looks good to me. The only reason I didn't merge it is I thought I would give other people a, a chance to look at it. But does anybody have any? Because this was uh, it's originally the one that was originally Emma's doc, the leadership yes. principles. Um, but it was just it was just headings, right? So I think that's probably, do you want me to go ahead and merge it? Oh, yes, please. I also fixed the typo, but I didn't even create a pull request for that. Okay. Um, the, I assume you want wait, sorry, when I when I merge your pull request, I assume you want me to delete the branch. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. That's what I've been doing, but then it occurred to me that I should ask. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a good idea. <laughs> okay. And then uh what about, should we look at 131, which was the uh, display focus areas as a table? Yep, I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I do too, now that we've got the, the terminology, which I'm sure we'll keep finding in other places because anytime you change the name for something, we changed it from project places. Yep, and I think the table display with the goals just makes it more um, accessible mm -hmm. because we have a description right there and it's also more pleasing to have it in a table. Yeah, and it's also more um, more consistent because if we have it in a table in all of the places, then it sort of stands out and it's easy to find. Um, so should I go ahead and merge 134 as well, which is again the focus areas as a table and adding a resource? Yes. Okay. Then in one thirty three, um, I proposed a new metric based on an interview I had, and I talked to the interviewee uh, who does not want to be named. So. I'll just take the credit for this. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is that we did not capture the diversity of our leadership team. Mm -hmm. And when we were looking at the leadership category or focus area, that was the first thing that came to mind and what we talked about extensively. So I channeled yeah. that into this. Um, yeah, that's a really good point because I I think I sort of thought of because we have a lot of that in the governance I think leadership di or diversity of the governance board but that's not the same as leadership I mean the the technical leadership isn't necessarily the same people who are on like the governance and so I yeah I hadn't really thought about it but I think that's a really good catch yeah I think that's what Daniel and Nicole had been looking at in OpenStack. Uh, that's a good question. So, 
I would say so. Okay, let me think. So we have governance and leadership. So governance, I would say, from the open stack gender diversity report, is more uh, governance in the foundation as a whole, while leadership, in this case, has been focused on technical leadership in terms of being PTR, which is the project team lead leader. But this is not, I mean, just OpenStack is not representative of any open source ecosystem, just the OpenStack ecosystem. So I don't know if we should be using that specific definition, but this is the way we were using that. So do you, okay. do you agree with adding that as a, as a metric, pull request 133? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So do you want me, I'll go ahead and merge that one too. Good. And the pull request is only to add the entry in the focus area. We mm -hmm. do have the issue 132, where the full detail page is fleshed out. Yeah. And the other one, the remaining one, the one 28, um, well, that's okay for me, so. Yeah, that was my pull request, so someone else should, should merge that one. I'm happy to do that. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you can, Georg. You were adding some comments there. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, Nicole, hello. Oh, hey, Nicole. Hello. Good morning, everyone, or good, a good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> good 24 hours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We were just uh, just finishing up going through some of the, the pull requests and getting them all all merged, and then I think we're I think we're getting ready to start in on the agenda, which is oh just a comment, uh, Don. And, well, I might not here, but you can basically merge and do everything in the repository, right? I can, yes. I think I just had I think I didn't realize I had permission, and because I wasn't a maintainer, I wasn't wasn't using it, so. Um, okay. But I, yeah, I did. I, I sort of checked that earlier because I, I merged something. So I, I was supposed to add you and, and Emma to the list of maintainers. I did nothing. Someone did. So <laughs> that's working, right. that's perfect. Maybe Georg did. Uh, I think it, we might have done this a while ago, uh, mm -hmm. unbeknownst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think we merged. Yeah, I think when you guys gave me initial access to the, the team and to the repository so that we could assign issues to me. I think that also gave me access to mm -hmm. to do a lot more. Yep. Which That's made, why why Kubernetes developed the bots and where you can control the bots with comments so that they wouldn't have to give everyone full access because GitHub doesn't have by ingrained mm -hmm. permission model. Yeah. So yeah, I've seen that in, in Kubernetes because I made a couple of contributions there as well. And the yeah, the bots. It's just like all of a sudden there's like six comments on your pull request and they're all bots. Um so before we move on, regarding the last pull request, um is there anyone else uh, who contributed? that we should include in our list of all contributors. Hmm, I don't know. Nicole, do you have the list of contributors in front of you? I think it's... Can you have a, was that a question for me? Yeah, so but there is a link in the, in the chat that is basically oh. into the list of contributors. So oh, gotcha. I, I don't know if you have someone else. Now. Yeah. Um, it's actually in the README. It's one of the things we just put. Oh, uh, okay. There I'm is. looking at it now. Okay. And Nicole, you you have a GitHub account, correct? I I think I do. I I haven't used it very much, but yes, I believe I do. Okay, because I found it. It's the same as your Twitter handle, but because there was no yeah. name and no description, I didn't want to link to it anywhere if I wasn't positive that it was a yours and that you were okay with oh. us linking to it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, so one of us should add a submit a pull request with the. I think you can just go in and put it straight into master. This doesn't require a pull request. Mm. Mm. I never edit anything directly. <laughs> and Matt, do you you have a? You're on GitHub, right? I am. Because we didn't link you either on the core contributors. I have them in the bottom with all contributors. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Okay. All right. One of us should fix that. Okay. I went through all of the emails that I had from our mailing list because our archive is still not functioning. Just FYI. I was talking to Leslie Hawthorne um, this morning, and she was like, I want to catch up, but you don't have an archive. <laughs> so. Yeah, Matt, have you, were you the one that was uh, going to talk to the Linux Foundation about that? About what? About the archive. We have no, um, oh. our messages are not being archived for the DNA. Are still not being archived? No. no. All right. No, it's a problem that they need to fix. I mean, uh, well, no, I did talk to them. Okay. And um, the result was was really bad. There were some changes that occurred to the mail lists that needed to be fixed. Um, anyway, I'll ping them again. Okay. So the, the answer is yes, they did do it. Okay. But the result was not what I wanted. <laughs> okay. Put it mildly. I mean, is it, do you want to talk about that or should we just let it go? Oh, it, it's it's fixed. Basically, the, <laughs> the email lists had people deleted out of them. I think I'd they what? understood. Sorry. I think they understood it that they wanted the mail lists archived, uh -huh. not the email messages. <laughs> oh, right. And so, um, basically, what happened was was the lists were people were removed from the list. It's all fixed now, but um, there's just some confusion there. So I'll I'll restart that conversation. Okay. And we've we've you do you check today, Georg, to make sure that the are the rest of the chaos do those have archives? They do. Hmm. It's just us, just D and I. Yep. Boo. Yep. Our archive is still squeaky clean. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, who's gonna create the pull request? Nicole, you, uh, Don, you found, found Nicole's uh, GitHub account. Do you mind creating that pull request? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Okay, perfect. Um, I saw Daniel, you added, I assume you added the list of issues that you closed. Thank you for those. Yeah, um, so basically, um, you pointed them during the last meeting. Um, I said, okay, I'll, I'll review them. And then I realized that we had everything already merged and they were aligned with the expected uh, template that uh, Emma mentioned during the last meeting. So everything was already done. So I marked everything as closed. That was easy. Perfect. Oh, in, uh, I was I was wondering, uh, Nicole. I remember that you and me had this conversation in terms of uh, creating pull requests, and one of the things I, I, I think we still don't have, or perhaps we may. We, I don't know if, if it's in our repository is how to create a pull request in terms of uh, either by common line or uh, perhaps some links or to documentation somewhere. So I don't know if you. Uh, if you have already 
played with this or if you would like to have this somewhere because it would be probably a good uh, starting point for the people in the repository. The, oh, this would be an interesting one. So are you, Daniel, talking about our conversation in Berlin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of basically yeah. how to do a pull request and how to how to uh, um, how to help people to be involved in the in the repository. You know, this would be a really um yeah, I'll take that as um I'll take that on. Um so uh yeah. Um so Danielle and I were talking about it and it actually goes back to a conversation um that Anita and I were having uh in Portland last July where we were talking about some of the barriers to to participating um in an in an open source project or open source community uh, might be some of the terminology or um some of the mechanisms and tools to to participate in the community um and I, uh, for me, I mean, I find this a challenge for myself. Is that often I um, I want to participate, um, and and yet I'm either not familiar with some of the tools, that sort of thing. So, sure, you know, I'll, I'll take this on, and and um, I mean, it would it would actually um, do two things. It would actually be a great education for me to work through it myself, and then I think. It would help others as well um, if they want to participate in contribute. That sounds like a great approach. We do have a contributing MD, so maybe you find some starting points there. Um, what this, what you're doing, then live in the contributing MD or in the readme MD? It would be in the contributing. I think. Okay. But the contributing MD doesn't have anything about kind of the, and we can at least include some like, yeah, links to like getting started. Cause I, I agree with you, Nicole. So, I mean, it's really easy for those of us that are familiar with, with GitHub and how things work and how to submit pull requests and how to use all of these tools. It's relatively easy for anybody that doesn't have that background. We don't provide them with any help to get started. And I think that, um, so I love the idea of you stepping up and, and helping out with that, particularly because, um, you know, as you said, it'll also help. It'll also help you learn. So I think you're kind of the perfect person to do this because the rest of us, it's really easy to make assumptions based on things we know already. And so I think it's really good to have you take a fresh look at this. I think that's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you need any help, let us know. So we can have sort of meeting and help with whatever. Mm -hmm. Great. I am sure that I will definitely need help. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I will um, do a lot of the um, uh, like work of just looking around things and oh, here's how this connects to this or what have you. And then, um, you know, you guys can tell me once I've written it up, you guys can tell me, oh, no, it actually works this way or that way or what have you. But yeah. I really like that idea. Great. Sounds good. I just remembered Emma is not going to join us today. She had sent out an email that she's at all hands. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, next item on our list is status of the README. Oh, I put that on the list um, because um, sorry, then I got distracted. I put this, I put this on the list uh, because of the conversation that we had with um, Ben. Is it Ben? Yeah, in the board meeting. It was in the board meeting. Okay, that's right. Um, and he wants to make the readme's more consistent across all of the working groups using a particular um, kind of best practice style. 
So I created an issue, which I think is linked off of the uh, um, meeting minutes or the yeah, yeah. off of the meeting minutes, and. Um, what I wanted him to do, because Nicole, you had talked about making some improvements to the README file. And so I wanted to make yeah. sure that he, he coordinated with you and so that, um, because you're obviously more familiar with what we've been doing in this group. So I thought it'd be good for maybe the two of you to work together on it. And I just wanted to bring it up in this meeting, one, so that people knew that, that he had sort of volunteered to help out with it. Um, and two, just to make sure that, um, uh, Nicole could connect to him. Why don't I, why don't I do this? Why don't I, so I think this actually pairs really well with the how to contribute exercise we just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Because it actually would then give me um, a, a way to do that, right? To, um, to carry it through. Um, so why don't, why don't I uh, touch base with Ben and uh, it looks like in, I've, I've, I've navigated on to what you put in the... Hey, Danny. Uh, uh, Daniel, can you mute? I think there's some noise coming from your so? keyboard, maybe. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry um, to interrupt you, Nicole. I was really distracted. <laughs> oh, no. No problem. Um, I, I navigated, I clicked through to what you had put in the meeting agenda or meeting minutes and um, just reading through. It looks like Ben has, has put together um, a proposed structure for the README. Mm -hmm. um, why don't I go through what our README is today, which is um, started to go through that with y'all. And um, I'll touch base with Ben on it and come up with a a confirmed um, readme structure and do this along with the contributing how to contribute exercise and then actually have the readme for the DNI work group um, be my output. Would that make sense? I think that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you very much, Nicole. I put you down in the meeting minutes for this. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. The next item is discuss contribution. Contributions. And there is an issue 126 associated with it. And I think this resulted in uh, the pull request that we already merged earlier. Um, part of the pull request was the um, definition of who we add to all of the lists which is now in the README file. So is there any more need for discussion on issue 126? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I'm not... I think we shouldn't close that quite yet. Um, just because I want to hear from Emma whether there are some other things beyond just listing them in the README, whether there were some other things that we could do to better highlight the contributions. because we're listing them, but she also talked about tracking all the contributions, <coughs> which I'm not sure is entirely feasible, but I want to know more about what, what she was thinking there. Okay, I put a comment on the issue with those questions. Cool.
Okay. Anything else on the topics of contributions? I personally think we just have to make sure that we as maintainers have an eye out for contributions mm -hmm. and to add new people who um, help us in any way. And then maybe we put it on our agenda once a month to review if we need to move anyone into the core contributors or move out of core contributors. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We might, in, in addition to documenting it here in the minutes, we might want to put this into the readme or somewhere else where we document that, hey, we should be looking at this once a month. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, maybe we can combine that with the pull request that you're planning, Don, to add Matt's and Nicole's GitHub account. Uh, add which one, sorry? You have a pull request um, to add Matt and Nicole GitHub yeah, account. Yeah, combine it with what, sorry? Combine that with adding a sentence on we will review core contributors once a month. Oh, once a month, yeah, yeah, okay, I can do that. Give me a second. Okay. Then I will cross discuss contributions of our list. We now have three items left to go through issues on GitHub, proposals, Python DevRun OS LS and rotating meeting facilitators. Um, why don't we do proposals next? So Python DevRun, Daniel, I, if I remember correctly, that was you. Yeah. Um, so sorry for with my keyboard. I, I'm supposed to have the microphone here, but it was still in my laptop. So sorry about that. Um, yeah. So uh, 10 minutes before the deadline, I realized I haven't submitted anything. You said I have to submit something. Uh, so basically, I submitted a similar talk that I sent to the PyCon Spain in terms of gender diversity with the limitations that that talk at that time had. And then after this, I sent uh, the documents or basically a couple of links to Emma and, and Don Foster. Um, well, if this gets accepted, then we can basically discuss uh, about this. But the uh, the submission was was it is there, so I'm basically waiting for their feedback. Um, and the other one was the Open Source Leadership Summit that I realized the call for paper uh, opens today. So hey. And uh, this is taking place uh, at the beginning of March. Um, by the way, this is aligned at the same time with uh, the idea of having someone from the from this working group in the board. But I don't know if this it's going to take place before that meeting. But if if it if that when happens, the, when is the meeting? Uh, what what I meant was that um, I, the, uh, as far as I remember, there's some ongoing discussion about having. Uh, in the chaos board, someone from this working group. I don't know yeah. when this. Yeah, so actually, I was going to bring that up. And in okay. the board meeting, there was a general okay. to get that done. So um, we have a couple people, Don and Org, have both expressed interest in being on the board. Mm -hmm. So it's just that those people will have, let's say, uh, 
free tickets or at least they should go for sure. So, well, oh, yeah, the free, the free ticket. Yes, that's <laughs> neither mentioned, neither of you mentioned that in your letters of interest. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I have to go anyways because of the to do group meeting. So, okay. I have to go to the, yeah. Okay. Look it up. So I mean, from the board side, I mean, I, I would suspect that the DNI representation will happen relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. We don't have to wait for another meeting. So I, I, I just wanted to, to point to that because then, uh, well, we have someone at least for sure at the Open Source Leadership Summit. Uh, so yes, in terms of the call for papers. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. I added the call for proposal in the meeting minutes. We have until January 28th. We have two months to figure out what we want to submit there. Um, yeah, those were the two proposals I had in mind. Yeah. I don't know if there are others. I, I'm thinking that the Open Source Leadership Summit, because of the group of people who attend there, um, a more strategic focused session about DNI metrics would be good mm -hmm. to spread the word on the work that we are doing and to see if we can come up with collaborators for our goal number one that we have where we want to put this into practice. And the Leadership Summit might be a good place to find people who have the influence to make this happen. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yep. I think you, know, you have really valid <clears throat> points there. and. In last year's, was it wasn't last year's, yeah, I think it was, um, uh, Leadership Summit, there were several folks who were interested in the work that we were doing. So, yeah, I think it'll be really valuable for us to, to be at the Leadership Summit and talking about the progress that we've made and the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's definitely the place to get, get some feedback too, in addition to getting some more contributors. Okay, awesome, thank you. I added all that to the meeting minutes. Are we talking about at this point, um, writing the, the, um, the abstracts or the the proposals and who is um, going to to do that? I'm I'm asking <clears throat> because I'm I'm happy to write up for the one the one for the leadership summit. Um, if if that's something that we're talking about right now, yeah, that would be good. Mm -hmm. You're the first okay. volunteer, so you get it. <laughs> Done. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. Sure. Any other upcoming conferences that we are going to want to submit to? Mm. Oh, the reason why I was talking to uh, Leslie earlier was because she wants to um, share some ideas for cross collaboration or cross overs uh, with her deaf room submissions uh, and chaos. So she'll post something to the list when she's ready.
Before we go through the issues, I'm going to put the rotating meeting facilitators up. This is, um, is an idea that I don't remember where I heard it, um, probably on one of the diversity um, empowerment summits, is to rotate who is facilitating meetings to um, to make sure it's not one-sided and to allow new people to take on more central roles within a community. And I think it's a really easy practice we can implement. And I know we have all facilitated meetings before just to make it a, a bit more formal mm -hmm. that we determine at the beginning of a meeting who is the facilitator and then just go around and give everyone an opportunity to be facilitator. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'll also su suggest this for the overall chaos call, by the way. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, so I'm a fan there, there too. There are two ways to do this. One, um, one is to rotate a little bit more than the meeting facili facilitation. So we could, at the end of every meeting, decide who's going to facilitate the next meeting, and they're responsible for sending out the reminder a day or two before and starting the agenda. Is that, is that too much? I think that's a great idea, to be honest. Yeah. Because that also means that we have someone who's accountable for sending out the reminders. Because Sunday I was like, well, no one sent out a reminder yet. So I guess I'll send one. Yep. Um, and so it'd be nice to have somebody sort of accountable for that. And they can do, they can do both. Send out reminders, update the agenda, and then facilitate the meeting. I really like that. Yep. And maybe we can... I really like the expansion of this idea to have the responsibilities documented. In addition, maybe we can also determine who is a note taker. Mm -hmm. Because at least I'm finding trying to lead us through the agenda and taking notes, there's I feel like we have pauses in between because I'm still taking notes before I move on to the next topic. Oh, that's a good point. We do that in another another project meeting that I'm in, not chaos related, but we rotate the, at the beginning of every meeting, we decide who's the facilitator and who's going to take notes. Um, and I, I agree that that's good to not have it be the same person. And we can all help, like we should be helping you right now. <laughs> So I have a question. Maybe it's related to this. Are you done with this, Georg? Or are you going to move on to the issues? I'd like to interject something somewhere. Yes, please do. I'm done with this. Okay. Um, so it's for it's for D and I, and it's for growth, maturity, and decline as well. And I kind of like tagged it on one of the one of the issues with respect to contributors and maintainers as to how do we get people to kind of move into a more active role in these work groups. So if I look at the mail list, there are people, there, and there are a lot of people who have expressed an interest in this as well. So how, how do we, you get the idea, how do we move people to be more active participants? It's an awesome core here, but I would love to see it expand a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> What do you think if we have, so the, the, we, we, we already have a list of issues that are, well, in, in the issues panel in, in GitHub, but uh, perhaps when we either we finish the call or we start the call for the reminder, we send, hey, and if you want to contribute from scratch, we, from scratch, we have the, this list of easy bugs in terms of, you want to help us? I, I remember from Gnome, they have the Gnome love bugs or some, some similar concept, some, something really easy for people where, hey, this is your first time here to have a look at the contributing guidelines, um, and you can help here, here, and here. I don't know. 
So at least information is in the mailing list. So we, we there, there are some people in the mailing list and not just the, the five of us. So that's an idea. What do you think? I like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I think this is kind of a open for all ideas right now. And I think attracting people through, I think kind of low overhead issues, it's a great way. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we already started tagging issues, and I just added a few more yesterday. So I think reminding people that we do have those is a good way to do it. And I was tempted to just do some of them. Uh, I think for us, it's important to focus on the more difficult ones and leave those easy ones for new contributors. Mm -hmm. Even if it means we don't have perfect naming on all of our files. <laughs> so to Daniel's point, though, then it's it would later. be tagging some of those really easy ones. Tagging them as whatever. Hmm. A name that identifies them as being pretty, pretty low bar. Yeah, I think right now we use the first issue tag. Yeah. So the point is how to publicly, okay. So the way I think we perhaps should be doing this would be to use things like Twitter or LinkedIn. But the point is that perhaps we don't have the time for this. So, but it would be great to have, let's say, open questions like, hey, uh, this is what the working group is working right now. Like, let's say, I don't know, uh, governance, uh, uh, a question in, in the or, or governance focus area so we have a set of questions then we can have some other questions like do you think that blah 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 so in that case if we get some viral thing we may get some good good answers uh, but of course someone has to take uh, need some time to produce the tweets to take care of the Twitter and blah 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 I know that we have a Twitter account but uh, that takes time, so I don't know. I think one thing we could do is maybe maybe once a month um, pick maybe five of those easy to fix issues and post them to to the chaos list and say, hey, here are a few things we're looking for help with if anyone's interested. Mm -hmm. um, or we could post those. I mean, somebody could do it as a LinkedIn post. We could do them as blog posts on the chaos blog. We could do something to, to, to surface those because it's, it's easy to say that we have all of these issues tagged, but I don't know. People are lazy. And, and, but if you get an email or you see a LinkedIn post or something that says, Hey, this group needs help with and something specific that you're interested in. I don't know. Maybe it would help. Yeah. Kind of a more of a push as opposed to a pull. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe it's just as simple as starting with something like that, you know, to your point, Don, and to your point, Daniel, because um, there's, there's people, it's not, the, the issue isn't attracting people to the chaos project or, or uh, drawing people's interest to the project. It's getting them to part, like they're here. They're actually, if I look at the mail list, they're actually really close. <laughs> to participating. It's just kind of doing that next phase. And maybe it's as, maybe it's as easy as that, or at least that's a great first start. And one of the things I hear from uh, doing the interviews is people follow along fairly well. They seem to be up to speed on what is going on. As long as we are posting it to the mailing list, that is the number one way people keep track of what we are doing. Which list? I'm not sure if they're DNI list specific or chaos overall list. Um, that I don't know. Okay. You know, and, oh, go ahead. It's, a, it's interesting because I agree with you. Folks are there and I think they're tracking um, and uh, because when I started to contribute and mark up the file around our goals and planning for 2019, 
Um, I had folks who had never participated in our DNI work group meetings come to me just because they, you know, we we know each other, and um, and say, hey, I saw you, you know, you've commented on this, you know, and 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 then I realized, oh yeah, I guess it is out there, right? <laughs> right? Like, um, but. I, I did realize that they were tracking as closely as they are. And then this one person even had said, oh, yes, and I'm planning on participating. It's like, oh, that's awesome. Um, but, yeah, so I, I agree they're there. So how do we just tip it a little bit so that they participate? And so maybe we pilot this just give it a little test run, put a few things out there and and see if we can get some momentum going. I agree. And I, you know, I don't think I'm talking like a lot of people either. Sometimes just one or two would be awesome to start. Yeah. Okay. That was it. I just, it's the contribution maintainer thing just drew that drew my attention to this other issue. Um, I guess I'll bring it up in the other. Maybe we can at the end of. Maybe I'll bring it up in the chaos meeting, meeting tomorrow too. Do people. So maybe at the end of every meeting uh, minutes, we have a list of two, three things that would help us that are low bar for new contributors. And then we post those meeting minutes to the mailing list. And I'm even thinking about sending the meeting minutes to the chaos overall list and not just our own. Um, similar to what growth maturity and decline is doing. So we keep parallel the practice there, and then we close every meeting minutes with one or two or three issues that mm -hmm. we would like help with. I have no trouble posting it to the main list, the minutes. Yeah. Makes a ton of well, sense to me. Especially since the mailing list is the archive that I send people to if they're like, how do I get caught up on what's been happening? Well, and it's I'm the like, only one archiving right now anyway, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I have several people been telling me um, they would like a link to the forum or they would like to know where the communication is happening. And so I've, I keep telling them, no, we're not using the forum, we're using the mailing list. But there are lots of people who didn't speak up who tell me privately that they would really like the discourse as a way to follow along. Mm -hmm. Wait, they say they'd like to use discourse as a way to follow along? They, they think it would be easier for them to keep up with what chaos is doing if mm -hmm. we had the discourse form where the conversations are better structured and easier accessible than the mailing list archive, which is tedious to go through. You'll never give up on discourse, will you? <laughs> as long as I keep hearing people say, hey, we would read like this. Well, all right. So I mean, I've been, all right. I, I feel like I don't even want to go there, but the problem you will always have is that in communities, in open source communities, you have a group of people who have been doing this for a long time who want mailing lists, and you'll have a group of people who are new and want forums. And the problem you have is that you have to pick one. You can't have both because the conversations get fragmented. So you either need to convince the people that are established and want the mailing list that there's a problem and they need to switch to discourse or this is not, it's not going to happen. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I feel, I feel really, yep. I, I'll stop. I don't want to 
fuck yeah i feel <laughs> i feel i feel like i'm being bitchy about this i'm just gonna say it even though it's being recorded um but it's it's every single open source community <laughs> within has had this problem and when we've tried to solve it by having both um we created a mess for ourselves um, because then the conversation gets fragmented and no one sees no one sees the whole picture. Right. Um, so you have to pick one. So if you can convince the team that discourse is the one. But yeah, and I'm a foot dragger on that one. So <laughs> I don't care. I'll yeah. be honest. I don't. I don't care. Um, what I care about is that we pick one. Yeah. No, I agree. We can't have both. Um, How but, about if our mailing list doesn't archive by next week? DNI. <laughs> No, <laughs> no that, like that's giving me nightmare flashbacks already to try to fix that issue. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Thanks for the the maybe somewhat sidebar discussion about trying to move people from from kind of this watch position to a more engaged position. I appreciate it. Awesome, thank you. I just typed up the meeting minutes. Uh, last one is to go through issues. Um, so let's open the issues. As a good first issue, according to our new agreed way of promoting working with us, I'm going to put file naming standards into our meeting minutes. Um, are there any specific issues anyone would like to talk about? I added, hmm. yes, Dan? Well, um, yeah, I was thinking that uh, last week we were working worked pretty well, at least for me. So, so something like uh, selecting a couple of issues and, and trying to move them, to push them to be merged and to be closed, it's something we can easily do right now. Basically assign people to issues and then try to iterate at least that works for me too. So. Which one would you like to tackle? I don't know, but um, uh, so last week I had assigned myself to contribution type, and then I did sponsorship and leadership diversity instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe you can update on contribution sentiment. I haven't done that yet, but I did sign up for it. It's on my task list. I was going to okay. do it, and I did a bunch of other stuff instead. Mm, I, ca I can try to advance on the uh, 121 and 120, which are um, uh, blah, uh, leadership onboarding and leadership mentorship. Uh, okay. That's okay for you. I assign you. Oh, I just did it. Oh, perfect. Um, for sure with the help of Nicole. So I think we all have things to do and push forward. I would encourage you to review um, the ones that have ready for review on them so that by next week we can hopefully merge them. Mm -hmm. I'm tempted. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to um, 
to sign up for the mentorship one, but I want to make sure to get my four other other things done first. Yes, Nicole, I agree. You have already agreed to do the contributing MD and the readme MD and the um, yeah. draft for the Open Source Leadership Summit. So yeah. I fully understand that you already have things to focus on. Mm. And the uh, ones you're focusing on are pretty important, so they should they should get a lot of focus. So okay. Yeah. I'll keep contribution type on my list as the one of the next things to do. Mm -hmm. And Don, you still have the contribution sentiment. Yes, exactly. With that, we are at the bottom of the hour. Thank you, everyone, for participating and engaging. We got through a lot of items. We have almost three pages of meeting minutes. We were very productive today. I'm proud <laughs> of us. Well, why don't you be on the main call tomorrow, the main chaos call tomorrow? I'll be there. Yeah, okay. I'll be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for the DNI update, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Oh yeah, we have the monthly call, yeah, so we exactly. should probably okay. yeah, prepare what we've done over the last month, not just the last meeting. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.